We have been talking about poikilocytes or abnormally shaped red blood cell for a little while. Now let's turn our attention to red blood cell inclusions. Today's topic is basophilic stippling. Now pay attention, I'm talking about basophilic stippling of the red blood cells, not the basophils. Please, basophilic describes the stippling. It's a blue stippling of the red blood cell, not the basophil, which is one of the white blood cells. So, basophilic stippling, also known as punctate basophilia, punctate because it's like dots, it's one of the red blood cell inclusions. They are basophilic dots or granules in the red blood cell cytoplasm. This basophilic granules basically are RNA residue consisting of ribosomes, degrading mitochondria, and other stuff. Basophilic stippling means there is a problem with erythropoiesis or new formation of red blood cell. The most significant cause of basophilic stippling is lead poisoning. Please never forgive this for your exam. When do we see basophilic stippling of the red blood cell? Lead poisoning, of course, and lead poisoning is described as microcytic anemia. With coarse basophilic stippling, you will find this on the blood film or the peripheral smear. What else? We have thalassemia, we have hemolytic anemia such as sickle cell anemia and of course thalassemia can lead to hemolytic anemia, megaloblastic anemia such as B12 deficiency, folate deficiency, etc. Also myelodysplastic syndrome or MDS. MDS is an intermediary gateway between normal and leukemia, acute myeloid leukemia. The intermediate state is called MDS and we will discuss this later. Since basophilic stippling in cases of lead poisoning is very high yield for your exam, let's talk about lead poisoning and basophilic stippling. So normally you have your ribosome. There is an enzyme called ribonuclease or RNAs that degrades the ribosome or break it down into degradation products. In lead poisoning, however, this enzyme is denatured by lead. So lead will destroy this enzyme. Now ribosome cannot be destroyed or degranulated. So ribosomes will build up and they will persist in your red blood cell. And this is called basophilic stippling of the red blood cell. Now let's give this case a shot. Please pause, read it, try to answer it and come back. Okay, we'll come back. Six year old boy, his parents complaining of deteriorating school performance. He is also tired, irritable, he has abdominal pain, constipation, sometimes he vomits. They live in an old house built in the 50s. This is important. Why is that? Houses built before 1978 in the United States contained lead in the paint. In 1978, the United States federal government, especially the Environmental Protection Agency or EPA, prohibited the use of lead in the paint chips inside the houses to paint the wall. So before that, maybe the house has lead in it. So on exam, the kid is lethargic, pale conjunctiva and fatigue, this is anemia. Systolic ejection murmur could be a flow murmur because anemia causes a hyperdynamic circulation. This is not an organic murmur due to a valve problem. This is a, a flow murmur due to overflow. Ataxic gait, so neurological problem, abdominal tenderness on deep palpation. Lab results, hemoglobin is 9, this is low. Hematocrit, this is low. MCV, this is low. So here we have anemia. And this anemia is microcytic. So we have microcytic anemia. On the peripheral smear, using the right gheme sustain, we found this. Using the Prussian blue stain, we found this. What's that? This is basophilic stippling of the red blood cell. How about this? This is the ringed sideroblast in sideroblastic anemia, as we have discussed before in a previous video. This is due to what? 
this is due to lead poisoning. Okay, because lead destroys your mitochondria. What's the most likely diagnosis? Lead poisoning? Yes. Alcoholism? No, very unlikely. Child abuse? Child abuse can lead to deteriorating school performance. Yes, fatigue? Okay, irritability? Maybe. Uh, lethargy? Okay, but child abuse will never lead you to have this in your blood smear, okay? Please. How about the next step? Should you call the child protective services? No, because it's very unlikely that this is child abuse. Unless these parents are making the kid eat the wall, which is pretty unlikely. Marrow biopsy? No, there is no need to. Measure blood lead level? Of course, this is the answer. How about number three? What's the treatment of lead poisoning? Is it gastric lavage? No, because this is a chronic lead exposure. Diferoxamine is used to treat iron toxicity or iron overload. EDTA and BAL, yes, this is the treatment. BAL is dimercaprol and EDTA. Ethyl, adiamine, tetracytic acid. <laughs> okay, that's it for today. Please consider subscribing and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you so much.